Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, I'm Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. I'm fascinated with two-minute noodles. When I was growing up, Nestle, the Swiss food giant, they introduced Maggi two-minute noodles in India. And being India, they started out with a few flavors, but then they had to put in this masala flavor. And so I'd get home every evening from school and I would salivate at the thought of opening up a Maggi noodle packet dipping it into hot water, and then enjoying a tasty meal shortly after. When you hear this story, the concept of elegance doesn't come to mind, does it? And yet, the entire concept of Maggie two-minute noodles is incredibly elegant. Don't believe me? Go try it for yourself. Give it to a 10-year-old and ask them to go through the process. Ask them to go through the process of getting themselves a meal. Even the most reluctant kid works out how to get a plate full of noodles without needing a recipe or even without any outside help. And to me, that sounds like sheer elegance. In this episode, we're going to look at the concept of elegance. How does a business get to elegance? It's not going to be a three-part episode like always, but there are three stages. These are the three stages that we will look at that apply to consulting or to training or to your workshop or book or whatever you're doing. You'll find that there is an end point, and that end point is elegance. And we have to get there. So what is elegance, and why is it important to any business? To get to the final bit, elegance, we have to list all the three steps. Step one is information, step two is results, and step three is elegance itself. So again, it goes like this, information, result, elegance. Now, let's take the example of learning online, and then let's work our way through the stages, starting with information. So information is what everyone gives you. The contents of a book is uh, information. A webinar presentation is an information package. And the amount of detail that you run into in a course, now that's packaged information as well. The sad part of today's world, you know this and I know this, is that a lot of content creators don't end up giving you a precise result. You don't get a system created for you. Instead, You have to bring out this massive sheet of butcher paper, and then you have to work out how to get things done systematically. So here you are, you've just spent, I don't know, $30, $50, $500, $5,000, and you don't have a system. What they've given you is information, loads and loads of information, CDs, no, not CDs anymore, but (laughs) digital downloads, videos, all sorts of stuff. And it's not aimed at a result, it's aimed at giving you information. Now, there are exceptions, of course. Some books, some courses, some consulting sessions, they will walk you through specific points. And instead of being stuck in this information island, you get to the second stage. So what is that second stage? The second stage is a result. And we all know what results look like. You set out to learn the complexity of Indian cooking, and then you're able to create amazing Indian dishes. You set out to draw a cartoon, and there you can draw a spectacular cartoon time after time. So much that people say, oh, are you a professional cartoonist? You set out to write. So I'm giving you these examples, but 
you already know what results look like. Results are precise. Results are very specific. It's not that you will just write headlines, but you will write eight different types of headlines in 10 minutes. That's specific. So there's no vagueness in results. And most of us, we don't experience this, either online or offline. We don't experience this specificity. If you're eating a muffin, it's very clear. You have to get a result. If you get information, this muffin is milled with these many calories and it's done this and it's got that, that's not good enough for you. You want the muffin to taste like a muffin. You don't care that it's going to make you feel fat or look fat or even become fat. You just want the muffin to taste like a muffin. And that is precise result. But then what takes us to the third stage, which is elegance? Elegance is like a Maggie noodle packet. And here's where we run into a little confusion. And this is because of the application. So if we were to take that muffin, the way it is presented, how it is plated, that signifies elegance. If you look at artwork and you look at all the detail in that artwork and how the artist has gone about stuff, well, that represents elegance. But since we're on this business topic, let's stick to the business topic. And in business, we do training and consulting and write books and podcasts and do all those kinds of things. And what elegance is in this realm is this fun thing that you have loads of fun as the client. You have loads of fun getting to the result. So it's something that is so energy efficient that you think, wow, can I learn more of this? Can I do more of this? You're getting to the result, but you're having so much fun getting there. So what does this fun thing look like in real life? Let's say you're in a city, you know that you could stand on the pavement, you could flag down a cab, and this is for any city, you can stand on the street and flag down a cab. But that's just information. You're not getting a guaranteed result. If it's raining, will you get the cab? It's hard to tell. However, if you have a phone number, if you have a cab company that you can call, now you're getting a result. It may still take 20 minutes, it might take 30 minutes for you waiting for that cab, but there is a guaranteed result. But what is elegance? The Uber app is elegance. If you've used Uber to get to a destination, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know how cool it is to call a cab. The app tells you where the cab is located, how it will get to you, how long it'll take to get to you, and then it messages you when it's when that cab is just outside your door. It gives you a map of your trip. It gives you the price. It gives you the price both in advance and then when you arrive. And it requires no cash or even the need to talk to the driver about the destination. Now that, that is elegance. It was fun going through that exercise, just of getting a cab. A very frustrating experience has been turned into a fun activity. But what do all of these stages have to do with your business? Most of our business fall into three core categories. First is consulting, where you meet the client one-on-one. -on -one. Then it's training in the form of webinars, seminars, courses. And then we have leverage in the form of books, info products, courses. But this is all sold like home study versions. You don't have to be there, so it's leverage. In every one of these situations, we tend to focus largely on information. So you look at a blog, for example. What is a blog post? In many cases, the blog post is not designed to give you a result. Instead, it gives you information. However, let's assume that you're a different kind of writer. You're not the kind to be happy with just doling out information. You want to give a result. At this point, you have moved. You've moved from that information phase to getting results.
you want to move to the third stage. Somehow you realized, okay, let's make this elegant. Let's make this elegant. And so now you have to get this factor of elegance. How do you get to elegance? You do this by adding this coolness factor, by making the process fun and easy. Fun and easy, at least in our world, is what creates elegance. So we'll take a few examples from the psychotactics site. You take the headline report when you first get to the homepage of Psychotactics. Now, the question is, is that headline report information, result, or elegance? Now, you may not know this, but at one point, that report was anything but elegant. It wasn't even a report at all. It was just an article. And it was an article posted in 8-point or 10-point. And if you don't know point sizes, well, that's very tiny, very hard to read. And this was on the earliest version of our website. Now, we were lucky. We were lucky in the sense that it allowed you to get from one point to the other. So inherently, it had a result. It showed you how you could write three types of headlines in under 10 minutes. So there was an element of information, there was an element of result, but there was certainly no elegance. So the final stage that we have to get to, elegance, and we have to make it fun and we have to make it easy. So we took the same content and we put it into a PDF. The formatting improved, the cartoons came in, captions came in, uh, lots of examples came in. And the transformation was somewhat similar to eating out of a pot versus being served a plated meal at a gourmet restaurant. Okay, so we are also having the, um, the lamb from the menu. But You're looking for that cool factor. You want to get that cool factor in place. And you have to admit, we all have to admit, that information is just the starting point. That somehow we have to get it out of our heads that information is everything because information was fine information was amazing 20 years ago not anymore i don't have to tell you that we're up to our years in information but what people are looking for now are results and if you can get those results one specific result doesn't have to be something fancy just one specific small result and then when we're done with that, we get to this ease factor, this fun factor, which is elegance. What made the report fun? Well, it was the cartoons and the layout and stuff, but also that report could have been clunky, it could have gone over 40 pages. Instead, it finishes off in just 10 pages. So it's done. Then you're scot-free. You're happy to have acquired that tiny skill. And that is what elegance is. It is a combination of both ease and fun. And that's what makes it so cool. And let's take an example of the podcast that you're listening to right now, which is the Three Month Vacation Podcast. So podcasts are vastly this huge mountain of information. that You have no idea what's coming up next in this 20 minutes, half an hour. You have no idea. But the three-month vacation podcast, it does something differently. So when you listen to it, you're given one thing to work on. It's a small thing that you can complete, and there is a result at the end of the podcast. So there is this information, but there is also this structure. The podcast starts out with an interesting story. It could be the fall of Rome. It could be subduction. It could be the winter of 1816. So there is this very interesting story that comes right at the start and then it pulls you in. And then you have three parts. In this case, this episode, we don't have three specific sections, but we have three parts. And then at the end of it, you have, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know. You know the structure really well. And at the end of it, you have this result. So you have information, you have result, but where's the elegance? The elegance is in the music. It's in the sound effects that match the voiceover. And there are lots of little bits of elegance which I'm sure you can detect. 
But even at the end of the podcast where I'm making announcements, which is really a sales pitch, it's telling you this course is coming up, join 5000 BC, it's telling you all of that stuff. It's so easy going that you're keen to listen to to the very end. And then there is this music that allows you to continue your walk, your drive. It's not this sudden turn off. There is this ease, there is this fun element that just makes you want to listen to it time and time again, that makes it bingeable. However, this elegance comes at a price, and that price is your ego. You take a software like Procreate, for example. Now, Procreate is this drawing software that I use on the iPad Pro, and I, as I said in the last podcast, I'm completely besotted with it. Now, the program was already amazing. It has been amazing for several years, and recently they did a new update. Thousands of users, they already swear by its elegance. They already love this software. And Australian founder of the app, James Kuda, spent endless number of hours with his programmer, Lloyd Bottomley. And these are two Tasmanians, and Tasmania is part of Australia in case you don't know. But these are two Tasmanians. And then they brought in Ilana, who's Kuda's wife, and she joined as chief financial officer, that's CFO. And then they are toiling over this thing for 18 months. Now, it's not just one thing and they put it out. Instead, it's 100 design reviews. And three times already they have built the program from start, from, from the ground up. Three rebuilds. And you can't have ego in this whole game because suddenly you realize that you have to have so many rebuilds, so many design reviews. You still are going to have to fix it. Think about it. We write a book first time and we go, that's it. And here they go around fixing it 99 times. Well, they must have fixed it 130 times for all I care. But the point is that the point is that elegance is a result of asking the client over and over again, how would you fix this? How would you fix it? Every programmer knows that his or her wonderful code is only good until someone gives feedback. And then the program has to be made simpler. It has to be made easier. It has to be made more intuitive and fun. But that's not the only price to pay. The second price is time. No matter how noble your motives, you're not going to get to elegance overnight. Even the tiniest booklet, like the headline report, just 10 pages of content, that took several iterations. And of course, there will be more iterations. It goes through these phases. Look at the article writing course, for instance. Now, the article writing course has been going for well over 10 years. And in these 10 years, we have got over 250,000 words of feedback. That's because, well, we've had over 250 clients and each one of them has to give a thousand words of feedback, not just during the course, but after the course, after the course, at the end of the course, last week, they have an assignment and their assignment is to give feedback, feedback on specific elements, on the group, on the method of teaching, on all of these elements we listed out. How did this go? How did that go? How did that go? How did... And now we have 250,000 words. But how do you know that the course is elegant? And I know the course is elegant because I've run this course for many years, and then we've had home study versions of this course. And what's happened is that when people do the home study, they also get a couple of critiques. So they send in their articles for critiques. And in the past, I would find a lot of things that needed to be fixed, stories, first 50 words that weren't right, things that weren't fitting. And now I've been struggling. Struggling as in, I can't find many things to fix. Their articles are so good. And that tells me that we are now on the road to elegance. We're nowhere next to elegance, but we're now on the road to elegance. And that's why I also do the article writing course live, which is, when I mean live, it is through a forum. Because you take that information, you take the same notes that you've given the home study 
group and then you run it past people who are doing the live course and then they come up with a whole bunch of mistakes and they come up with a whole bunch of feedback and then you can go in there like a programmer and you can tweak it and make it more fun and more easy and now what seems to be the worst thing that most people have in their day which is this dread of having to write it becomes fun the dread of having to draw it becomes fun all of this is nonsense this concept of okay learning has to be hard learning has to be difficult and people ask me when does it become difficult and my question is why does it have to be difficult It's difficult because it's not elegant. It's not fun and it's not easy. So it takes up a lot of your energy. And of course, now it's difficult. It doesn't have to be difficult. Elegance is about fun and easy when you're training. That's it. They get to a result. They get the information. But it has to be a fun and easy process. And that fun and easy comes from feedback from not having this massive ego that everything is right. In the last article writing course, someone didn't just give feedback. They said that we should trash the forum. Can you imagine that trashing the forum, setting in a new forum, there are new systems, new design, new everything, moving all of the old forum stuff across, getting existing clients to then sign into the new forum. We're talking about a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of energy. And if you want to get to elegance, that's just what you have to do. But you can't do it this year or next year or the year after that. When I first started out with the article writing course, we didn't have any notes. It was just a teleconference. So whatever you made of it, you made of it. And then we would work through the forum. And then after that, the next year, we got notes. Well, I sat down and wrote the notes. And then every year, we have tweaked the notes. We have tweaked the course. We have tweaked the stuff. Last year, we had to change the whole thing. The, every single note was rebuilt without looking at the previous notes. And then the forum was rebuilt. And all of this takes time. And you have to be somewhat of a crazy person to want this level of elegance because, you know, it's like food. You can just serve the food or you can make it elegant on a plate. Programmers understand this concept. They understand that you can't rush things. They know that if the software works well and it gets results, there is no fire. They've completed their stage of information. They've completed their stage of result. But then... That feedback comes in. Now they have to create a new version. Version 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, and so it goes on. First, there are these tiny increments, and then you have to make this big leap to 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. With every iteration, there's going to be this need to create something better, but without bloat, without overwhelm. It has to be fun and easy. It, it just has to be fun and easy. There, I can't think of anything else that will make something elegant. And one of the best examples you can get is if you buy one of these fancy DSLR cameras, these expensive $3,000, $5,000 cameras, and they have all this elegant photographs and stuff before, and then you buy the book and you get this big manual. Now you get it in PDF, of course, but this thick manual that is so dense, so technical, so boring, so inelegant. Where does this leave you and your business? Well, there's a good chance that you're creating a course, you're writing a blog post, you're creating some consulting program maybe. What is the stage that you're at? Are you in the information stage? That's fine. If it's just the information stage, that's where you are right now. You're the programmer, you're just starting to get the information together. But then, what is the result? Can you define the result? When we did the sales page course earlier today, we did workshops in 
Brussels, we did it in Singapore, we did in New Zealand and in Houston as well. We're going to do that. We had to define the result. And sometimes you can start with the result. You can go, okay, here's what I want as a result. And I didn't know how to do it when I started out. I didn't know that you could write a sales page in three days. But I said, okay, we're going to write a sales page in three days before leaving the workshop. That was the goal. How are we going to go about it? That's where the elegance comes in. You put in the information, you test it out with someone, you see where they're getting stuck, and then how to make it simple. At the end of it, we have a postcard. All of the stuff that you need to know about a sales page is on a single postcard. You look at the postcard, you can write your sales page. Now, that is a level of elegance. And that doesn't come just by magic. And it doesn't come because someone is skilled at doing something. The skill part matters, but what matters is that feedback, that lack of ego, that the fact that this is broken. This is not about perfection, because largely perfection is procrastination. It's like, I'm a perfectionist. Well, I don't care if you're a perfectionist. You still have to get your stuff out there on time. You still have to do the workshop on the day it arrives. You still have to send out the course. This is not about that perfectionism, but this is about making it fun and easy. And so we can't confuse those bits because a perfectionist can still put out 300 pages of information that bores you to death. Fun and easy. How does it become fun and easy? So that you look at a postcard, you go, I, yeah, this is easy. I can, not only can I do the sales page, I can teach someone else how to do the sales page. And that is elegance. Now, you have made that student a teacher. That is like the ultimate elegance. You can hear the excitement in my voice, can't you? So let me go on with the podcast. So you have information. That's where you need to start. But the second part is the result. What can you guarantee the client? And it goes like this. You fill in the blank. You say, when the client finishes with this product, when the client finishes with this training, when the client finishes with this consulting, he or she will be able to do blank. And if you want to make it more specific, you can go, he or she will be able to do blank in X amount of time. So he or she will be able to write three types of headlines in under 10 minutes, right? So put that as your goal to create a result, to sit down and create a result, which is what fits in that blank. And Maggie Noodles will probably sit nicely with that elegance factor, which is he or she will be able to make a tasty meal in two minutes. In two minutes, it'll be done. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. So what can you do today? I think the one thing that all of us need to do today more than ever before is to say, what is the result? And we don't have to hanker after this massive result, like this person is going to make a thousand dollars a month or they're going to do this. What is the one thing that you can guarantee? So you're teaching a photography course, for instance. What is the one thing that you can guarantee? You're taking photographs of someone. What is the one thing that you can guarantee? There's always this factor of result, and we're all looking for result, and that's the one thing that you need to work on today. Sit down and work out what is that blank? What goes in that blank? So even if you were to take a book like The Brain Audit, and it has 180 pages, and you go, okay, forget all the 180 pages. Let's go to page 89. On page 89, there are these six questions. These six questions enable a client to get a testimonial that's 400, 500 words, maybe more, then let's get them to those six questions. That is a result. And so focus on a very small result, maybe a single page in your course, maybe a single concept in your consulting, one thing, and get the result. And then make it fun and easy with the feedback that you get and now we have elegance. We'll talk more about elegance in 5000 BC. So join us in 5000 BC because 
we want to have some really ongoing smart conversations. We have smart conversations, but we want people that like this kind of stuff, that enjoy not just getting one more article, another article. There are loads of articles. There are over 322,000 posts in the forum, and you don't have to read even 20 of them because as you join the conversation, it's a new conversation. There are articles, there is all the stuff that you get in pretty much any website, any marketing website, any website that's business related. You're going to get all these videos and text and all that stuff. But the key is this conversation that you have that enables your business to go forward. And that's where 5000 BC does a really good job. So join us at 5000 BC. You know how to get there, 5000BC.com. There are two courses that are coming up, home study courses. One is on the 23rd of September and then the 13th of October. So you've got those dates, 23rd of September and 13th of October. The first one is the home study course on uniqueness, which is everybody looks the same in your business or seemingly looks the same. How do you stand out? So the clients give you the business, they give you the business, even though you're charging a higher price. And you can only do this through uniqueness. The article writing course was less than half the price than it is today. We changed it with the uniqueness. Now it sells out in less than a day and it sells out at more than twice the price. What changed? The notes changed, the information changed, but the client didn't know that. What they saw was the uniqueness and that was the toughest writing course in the world. So that toughest writing course in the world has become more elegant and it's more fun and more easy. And that is on the 13th of October. You have to get on the waiting list, otherwise you don't get any notification. So I better get these announcements right or Renuka will kill me. So 13th of October is the article writing home study. And 23rd of September, which comes earlier, is the uniqueness. Get one of them and you'll find that they're very elegant. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. I'll say bye for now. Bye-bye. still listening last week at this time we were in fiji and fiji is just two hours and 37 minutes away from auckland well that was our flight time and we've never been there we've been in auckland for close to 18 years and never been to fiji and i wasn't impressed when we were landing in fiji i can tell you i was expecting all these coconut trees and this lush vegetation and it looked pretty barren to me. And then when we were driving to the resort, which is the Marriott, well, I still wasn't impressed. And then we had this driver that just wanted to talk endlessly. He was an Indian guy, not Indian Indian, but born in Fiji. And then he insisted on talking about the medical system in India. And that drove us crazy. Well, it drove me crazy. Renuka was actually, Renuka's the introvert. And she was listening to him and asking him questions. And I was like, oh, just get me to the resort we had a great time and for lots of people great time is snorkeling and sailing and one million activities and our great time is like wake up go for breakfast Renuko would go back to the room she'd look at some stuff some email and then she'd fall off to sleep and people are thinking wait one second you don't do email on on holidays right and this wasn't a holiday this was just a change of scene we went from Auckland to Fiji it was a great change of scene. We would have breakfast. I would continue to draw. I was so drained after finishing the website that I just forgot my brushes in Auckland. That's my painting brushes. I forgot um, my ink. I lost, well, I found it, but I lost my Apple Pencil. So I was really, I needed that little break there. And then before our lunch, we would get some beers and then play foosball. And Renuka just trashed me in the first couple of games. And then I worked out a strategy and I started beating her. But then I had to retire. I had to retire. My career ended because that foosball table was so low and I was bending so much that my back started hurting. So that was the end of my foosball career. Anyway, that's the story for now. We're back. We're refreshed and... 
Well, thank you for listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. If you haven't left a review, do that. You can go to iTunes or Stitcher and leave a review. And join us in 5000 BC. Bye for now. Bye.